Hello folks, it's me, RB. It's January 2020 and I'm here on location in a top secret Glen, Glen right in the heart of Dumfries and Gallery. This is a protected haggis breeding zone and I've been invited along today to come and see if I can spot some. You might may wonder why I'm dressed up in this gear, but as many people know, haggis cannot see tartan. This is why the ancient haggis bashers used to wear kilts and highland dress. The, um, it's camouflage and it meant that they could sneak up on a haggis and never be spotted. So I've been told by the expert that red tartan is the hardest for the haggis to spot. Um, I've also been told that you have to cover your head in highland cow hair um, as this helps also to protect you from the vision of the haggis. Haggis also have a very sensitive smell, so I've been told to wear the muckiest pair of whirly boots I could find so that my feet would just smell of Highland cow poo, um, which the haggis don't mind living alongside, but they do not like us human beings. So I'm down here in the Glen, and I'm gonna see what I can find. We're going to go for a wee walk along the trail and see if we can spot any haggis nests. Currently, I'm down at the bottom of the Glen. There's a burn flowing, and this is ideal haggis territory. There's trees across the, across the burn because haggis hate getting their feet wet. And I think on this tree, I can see a trail. It looks well worn and it looks like there might have been some recent haggis activity. Right the way across here, you can see a leaf path worn along. And if I'm not mistaken, it goes right up the hill, right up. Let's go and have a closer look. So we're not that far into tracking a haggis. Right up this hill, just where I'm standing, is a trail. We're gonna follow it and see if it'll lead to a nest, but we need to be very, very careful and very, very quiet. Haggis are renowned for being quite vicious critters when they get cornered, so we'll have to be really, really careful. It's quite steep going in here, following this path. The experts who keep an eye on the haggis in this glen and the volunteers that work here tell me the haggis are quite prone to climbing up the trees when they get the chance, especially during the daytime to brood. But uh, we'll go further into the denser cover to see if we can find any traces of them on the ground. Here, in this quieter part of the glen, at the base of this tree, I found what looks like fresh haggis droppings. The, uh, there's only one way to tell if they're haggis droppings. And you have to be very, very careful because they might be rabbit droppings. The difference being, haggis droppings taste of whiskey. But rabbit droppings taste of shh, shh, shh. I think I can hear Haggis. You can hear the drone in the background. It sounds a bit like bagpipes. That's the mating call of a haggis. Here you can see the sheen on the haggis droppings. These are very, very fresh looking ones. Hmm. That is definitely haggis droppings. Thank God. You don't want it to be rabbit droppings. The haggis that live in this glen are generally Galloway gingers. They're a bright orange colour and they get the colouring from the pine cones that they eat. You can see quite a large amount of pine cones usually sitting outside the nest. Now haggis's favourite food as everybody knows are turnips and tatties. But at this time of year, they're hard for the haggis to find, especially in a non-arable area like this glen is situated in. And quite often, you'll find in regional areas, the wild hairy haggis are different colours because of what they eat. This looks like a haggis nest here. You can see all the remnants of the eaten pine cones sitting outside its front door. Maybe if we're very lucky and very quiet, we might manage to spot one. Well, I've been sitting outside this haggis nest for several hours now, 
and nothing has appeared yet. I've been lying down in my tartan camouflage, very, very close to the nest, so that I could catch it on camera. But unfortunately, nothing has appeared. Just nothing seems to turn up. It's been several hours since I've been down here in Haggis Glen now. And still, I've managed to spot nothing. I'm going to put um, a camera, remote camera, up near where the mouth of the Haggis nest is. And maybe overnight, or during the next few hours whilst I'm away, we might catch something on, on Phil. So I'm having side effects from eating the Haggis poo, and I've got to go. I'm going to go and do that and leave the camera filming just to see what happens. Well, I've returned back down to the Glen on the quad bike to retrieve the camera. Once I've processed the film, I'll put it together and add it onto this uh, little video for you all to see. Um, hopefully, we'll manage to spot one of the wee good and timorous beasties. And, uh, whew, I've got a wee panic in my beastie. So hopefully, that will be evidence and proof to show to you all and the rest of the world at how well the wild hairy haggis, especially the ginger variety, are doing here in the heart of Dumfries and Galloway. This has been RB reporting for DGW Geo. Have a great Burns Nest, folks, but be safe and don't drink too many drams. Don't eat too much haggis poo either. Take care.